Hey, tubers. You remember these shells? This is one of the shells from uh, the HS6 gunpowder loads from the 20 gauge. But uh, didn't fare too well in cold weather. Well, I've got one left, and I got another chronograph. I was going to say a new chronograph, but actually it's used, uh, but it works. And, uh, I'm going to set it up, and I'm going to see exactly what the velocity of those things actually are. Curious. Obviously, the pressure is pretty darn high. So I'm on my way out to the quarry to check it out. I'm also going to test a few other shells. Uh, some 12 gauge loads that I made for honey. See how they fare. Just mainly checking velocity today. Uh, more than pattern. I already checked pattern with those and they did alright. So I don't need to check pattern on paper. The two dimensional pattern. Just need to check to see how fast they're coming out the barrel. I'm here at the quarry. Ready to test my shells. Looking at the rocks over there, they're not the same as they were last time I was here. Looks to me like a whole bunch, man, a whole bunch of little rocks fall off. A lot. I'm wondering if we didn't have a small earthquake out here. It's possible. Or the weather may have lodged them loose, but it seems like an awful lot of them came down all at once. Here in Oregon, we do get earthquakes, not as many as California, but we do get them. Okay, now here's a couple of them from when I was hunting, and there was an HS6 powder. But the ones that look like this uh, had larger shot in them. Now the ones that had number five shot didn't look like this. They looked fine. And the one I have left to test is a number five so it shouldn't come apart but I am interested in seeing what the velocity is Only 12.47? Really? Huh. Wow. Well, I'm less than impressed. 12.47. Not very good. It was good for finishing off that one duck uh, in the video that I was putting together that ended up getting erased. Uh, now we'll test a black cloud to make sure that it is what it says it's going to be. This wind is a problem. Black cloud. Uh, that says only 1242. I'm wondering how accurate this chronograph is. Yeah, it's only supposed to be what, 13 something, I think. I can't read the box. It's all kind of rubbed off there. I believe it's supposed to be uh, around 1,300 feet per second or 1,350. I'm going to try some of these uh, reloads of mine that are BB. This is what I used uh, to kill that goose in my video um, about uh, 
killing or uh, pass shooting geese with a old 20 gauge bolt action shotgun. We'll see what this reads. Now another thing too is this is velocity out of a semi-auto gas operated gun. And I'm thinking that maybe some velocity may be lost in the operation of the uh, gas. Because some of the gas filters out, so that's, that's some of your pressure behind the pellets. I don't have the other 20 gauge to check that theory out. Also, I'm just going to go ahead and load the magazine and see if they cycle properly. Check three of them. Thirteen oh six. Twelve seventy. Okay, so it looks like it's probably right around thirteen oh thirteen hundred, give or take. Not exceptionally fast. Uh, but, it's alright. I see these are factory loads of lead shot. And they're supposed to be only 1,210. So we will see what they show. Eleven fifty-nine, so that's pretty close. I mean, it's a little bit less. You know, I might be right about the automatic, uh, semi-auto mechanism. Maybe. Okay. Here's a two-shot twenty gauge. Try shooting this. See what it does. Oh, I forgot I was going to test the black cloud. Okay. Oh. Don't want that one. Yeah. Twelve thirty-two. It's a little slow. Well, it's only supposed to be about 1300, I think, or 1350. Try another one of these BB ones and see what they show. That didn't feel like very much recoil, although it still cycled. 1117, really? That's pretty poor. I guess I'm going to have to use these shells up and just make some more fresh ones because these are not performing up to snuff. This cycle. 1440. That one was good. Fourteen twenty eight, that one was good. Now see sometimes it don't fire. It hit the primer but it didn't go off. Try again. There. That felt weak. 1147. Not very consistent. Although it seemed like the ones that worked better had higher brass on them. Here we go. I, yeah, I do have some more HS6. Here's an HS6 BB. Let's see if it falls apart. Let's see. Yeah, sure did. Look at that. It split. It does not like the larger shot. 1482. Good velocity. Yeah, it had good velocity. 
Here's an AK-6 three-shot. Let's see if three shots are okay. I'll check that in a minute. Oh, it errored on me. Oh, 1309, but it's not reading right, so. I'll probably pass the number that it can use. I think it can only do like 25. Shell casing's okay. Yep. Here's another HS63. Let's see what it does. Fourteen eighty eight. I'm getting good velocities out of these. Which one was it? This must be it right here. Yep. And the shell case is okay. Here's another HSS BB. Let's see if it splits like the other one did. Oh yeah, I sure did. Look at that. Look at that. 1367. The velocity wasn't as good either. Nope. Another HS63. We'll try it and see what it does. Oh, that sounded... 1500. Excellent. And the shell, yeah, it's warm. Shell looks like it's okay. Now, wait a minute. No, it's not. Take a close look here. Take a really close look. Primer sticking out, and it's got a little bulge right there that it did not have before. So, I think the recipe calls for, I was thinking it was six shot or seven shot. I'm going to have to stick to that because when I go bigger on the shot, uh, it doesn't handle it well at all. Now, let's test again and see if it's going to, the gun seems to cycle fine with my two and three quarter inch shells. And HS6, three. Followed by a regular BB, followed by HS6, three again. And I'm just gonna run, just cycle in this time. cycle good. Yes, it did. This casing was not too good. Right. Now let's try the black cloud. See if the three inch is going to cycle okay. When I cleaned this last time, I used different oil than before. Supposed to be good down to negative 20 or something, but I think the problem is not. Oh, now what? What is your problem now? You stupid son of a bitch. There. Maybe my plug is causing a problem. It's a homemade plug. It's not giving. It needs to be more give, I think. Let's find out. Yeah, that cycled fine. Yeah, it seems to be fine. It's either the cold weather or it was the other oil that was in it.
Well, it looks like it's cycling fine now. Of course, I'm not shooting at any live birds, naturally. One thing when you practice, you really should pick up your garbage. That includes your shells and your wads if you can find them. I'm going to go over here and look and see if I can see any wads. I've got lots of the overshot wads. But they They'll biodegrade, they'll break down quick. Here's a 10 gauge plastic wad. I recognize my work. Three, three pedals. Okay, that's a Winchester. This is, oh, this poor, this poor bush. Jeez. Yeah, see, several wads. These things are just like shotgun shells. They, clutter up the ground. Of course, I only found a few. I don't know where all of them went. Hmm. Oh, there's one over there. That was not pleasant. Another 10 gauge wad with three pedals. Now I got stickers in my socks. There's the gas seal for that Winchester. Here that is for another one before. There's one of my wads right there. 12 gauge. You can also learn things about your shotgun looking at your wads. Now, for instance, 20 gauge wad. Yeah, the problem I have with some of them, this one the gas seal tore on, and this one a hole burned through it. I've had that happen before. It's either a hole burned through it or the pellet went through it. It looks to me like it was pushed from the powder side out. This one opened up nicely. This one did fine. All these 10 gauge wads did good. This uh, factory Winchester wad did okay. So, anyway, uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover on reloading and wads and all that stuff. I'm, I'm reading more about it now. I've actually learned a whole bunch of new information that I didn't know before. And eventually I will share it with you. I've got a whole lot of video to, to edit. And I've been working a lot of overtime lately. And it's been really hard to get any time to do it. I get home and I sit on the couch. And then next thing I know I wake up and it's almost midnight and I got to go to bed so it's a uh, I'm not quite as I can't take the long hours as good as I could 30 years ago you know it's starting to feel a little bit age but <clears throat> I still keep up with people half my age and even less so that's always good anyway it's been uh it's been fun testing these shells what was that Sign. <laughs> it's been fun to testing these shells out, and I'm going to go home and work on formulating more loads. Wait a minute, what have we here? No, I'll save that for another time. I'm not too worried about it. But the HS sits, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use that. I, I could probably use it if I reduce the amount of powder, um, but I'm going to have to experiment and find out uh, what kind of velocity I still have with it. As I really would like to have at least 1,400. Uh, we'll see. So what have we learned about the HS6 20 gauge shells? Well, what we learned was 
pressure probably with the larger pellets definitely must exceed the maximum pressure that the shell can take because it's destroying the hulls. And even three shot was marginal. Um, you'd probably be okay with fives or sixes or sevens. So if I'm going to run with that kind of a load, I'm going to have to use small shot. Or uh, I'll have to reduce the amount of powder. Or the amount of shot, either way, or both. Um, I think this illustrates my theory is probably correct. That the larger pellets are causing a spike in the pressure because of the bridging phenomenon, which Ballistic Products talks about in some of their manuals with large pellets uh, trying to bunch up at the end of the barrel where the choke is. And any slowdown on, on those pellets getting out at all is going to, that pressure is still building in the barrel. So it's going to keep building, and it's building at a very fast rate. And the shell just can't, just can't handle it, not with that kind of load. It all depends. So I'm going to have to work on getting more consistent loads. The black clouds seem to be doing well. I've still got quite a few of those for the 20 gauge, so next duck season I'll probably use that. That's a good duck gun. It's a lot of fun. I would like to kill a goose with it, uh, but that'll be a little harder to do. It's not impossible. I just got to get close enough. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.